Land is a major factor of production and an essential resource upon which all human activities take place from. Eradication of poverty and hunger and the sustainable use of resources depend in large measure on how indigenous people access land and other natural resources. The livelihoods of many, particularly the rural poor and to some greater extent women, are largely dependent on secure and adequate access to land. In Zambia and other developing countries alike, the rural and urban poor are largely marginalized with regard to land access, which consequently deepens them into impoverishment. Customary land in Zambia is one of the two legally recognized land governance systems in the country. Customary land is estimated to account for close to 90% of the land in Zambia and is largely administered by chiefs and village headpersons. Over the past decade, the nation has witnessed phenomenal conversions from customary land to statutory land, a situation which has seen some people residing in customary areas being displaced or having their ancestral lands being significantly reduced in size. The unfortunate reality about customary land is that it is currently the least secure tenure modality as compared to statutory land because it is largely undocumented. Traditional authorities largely use landmarks and bank on oral tradition to delineate chiefdom boundaries, village boundaries, and individual parcel boundaries. This informal mode of land management has resulted in boundary disputes among traditional authorities and their inhabitants, and in some instances, women and children are mostly affected by these disputes. In order to address the shortcomings of customary land administration, People's Process on Housing and Poverty in Zambia and the Zambia Homeless and Poor People's Federation, with support from the UN Habitat Global Land Tools Network and the Wairo Commission, successfully piloted the Social Tenure Domain Model, STDM, in Chief Chamuka's chiefdom to strengthen customary land governance in the chiefdom through a purely participatory mapping process. The STDM is a Social Tenure Domain Model. A Social Tenure Domain Model is a participatory tool which maps out the relationship between people and their land. So the domain model in two, ya me seven zesa, ku people malandi kushita numeration kuti na wina ngo azi kuti wya pele la umu azi wya azi ma landi a kuti ne pangani a kuti za kuyamba na kujakusira. The Wairo Commission is a global network of grassroots women's organizations um, that are federated and organized to do their own development. Um, and so the Wairo Commission uh, supported um, the Zambian local partners to bring the social tenure domain model along with our other global partner, uh, the UN Habitat Global Land Tools Network. Um, and so we're supporting this process of STDM here in Zambia. One of the important customary law uh, which governs this chiefdom is that uh, every individual who has reached the age of 18 years and wishes to live independently is allocated with a piece of land traditionally by the head person managing that area and um, the name of that individual is entered in the village register and uh, a record of that is also uh, given to the chief of the local area who is myself, and um, traditional marks are given to that piece of land which is allocated to that uh, individual and also a letter of offer is given to that individual. Apart from that, uh, we have gone ahead and then introduced the certificates of uh, customer land occupancy by using uh, local partners such as uh, the STT TDM, which is being uh, uh, administered or assisted by the uh, people's process and the UN habitat. Well, the strategic importance of uh, documenting customary land tenure is basically to strengthen and enforce uh, ownership of land by ordinary people uh, in the villages. We see as PPHPs that the importance of uh, safeguarding people's land rights, especially in the villages. As you know, customary ownership is susceptible to all sorts of kind of uh, violations. The, 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 the community members are not protected. 
there isn't any form of documentation that is issued to ordinary villagers. So through STDM, we hope that the land rights will be uh, uh, addressed um, at community level. It is a tool that ensures that the, the traditional leaders, together with their community, jointly manage land without, with, to ensure that there is accountability, transparency and good governance in a chiefdom. According to our laws, we ensure that uh, women should have equal access to customary land. There is no segregation and even when it comes to um, titling or land registration, there is no segregation, there is equity in the way land is uh, governed in this chiefdom. So both women and men have equal access to customary land. So it's helpful to the community because one, it lessens problems. It lessens problems in the, in the sense that everyone else is able to understand where he starts and where he ends. It helps the headmen to understand their people easily. Even understanding their uh, traditional boundaries with other fellow headmen. So it is a very helpful uh, tool to, to us civic leaders, because even in the council, we are always discussing about boundaries. How do we incorporate our people? How do we make our poor people understand how they are supposed to live on the boundaries? 30th November 2016 marked a dawn of a new era in Chief Chamuka's chiefdom, which saw the chief inaugurating the issuance of 40 customary land certificates to villagers of Wulemo. The issuance of these customary certificates through the STDM tool in Chamuka Chiefdom provides an evidence-based platform which can be infused in shaping up the ongoing land policy and the customary land bill. At national level, the government is implementing the national titling program and STDM can be used as a pro-poor and participatory tool to aid government in achieving this program and massively reduce all costs. <laughs> We are going to have the best way of managing customary, customary land tenure system in the country because we are going to see a situation where each individual is going to have his or her own piece of land registered but after registering each individual is going to have a customary land uh, certificate which is going to secure his or her piece of land but still retaining the authority of the traditional leadership over this same customary uh, land tenure system with a clear procedure of how this land is going to be acquired and a clear procedure of how this land is going to be managed and a clear procedure of how the land rights are going to be transferred from one person to the other without necessarily taking away the authority of the traditional uh, leadership on this customary land, which I like and which my people like and which we want uh, to prevail across the country. A situation where uh, two land tenure systems are managed independently, though in collaboration with uh, the government. Because we know that uh, we do not live in, uh, in a vacuum. We live in space which is, has governance system. And so the two governance system, the traditional authority as well as the state, should work hand in hand but respecting each uh, authority. A woman remains at home with the children and looks for food. If we empower a woman with land, then the woman is going to bring the best out of this land because the woman knows what is good for the family, knows the best nutrition to give uh, to the family, and this nutrition comes from the land. So I feel a woman is the best partner in development and if this woman is supposed to, to continue with that best 
and come out on top of the things, then a woman should be empowered with land. And this land for the woman, as well as that of a man, should be secured. And this should only be done through customary land certification, which we are enjoying with People's Process and STDM.